This is Senior Product Manager Derek Wood welcoming you to another Infrascale how-to video. In this video, I'll be explaining what a client is and best practices in setting up and configuring your clients. The prerequisite to this step is that you first have set up your Infrascale appliance. For more information on that, visit infrascale.com support and check out our knowledge base or contact a support representative. The Infrascale Appliance Setup and Management is based on client relationships with target machines. A client is a relationship or mapping between a device, physical or virtual, that you'd like to protect with your Infrascale Appliance. Clients can be configured to have specific retention policies for backup to your primary Infrascale Appliance. For this reason, there may be cases wherein a single device may have multiple clients set up. For example, if you have a Windows server running a SQL database, you may want two clients, one for a retention policy specifically for your SQL application backup, and a second client with a retention policy more specific to a full DR image backup that you could use for a local or a cloud boot. We have a few different ways to configure clients depending on your environment, physical or virtual, so I'm going to start with the basic by creating a single Windows client on a Windows machine. Before we continue, you'll need to have access to install our Windows client software on the server or machine that you're going to protect and have the internal IP address ready. We begin by first going to our Clients tab and creating a new client record. At the top left, we see the Actions and select New. Here we can give the client a name and we can give it a description. Select the operating system and then you'll need the IP address and you can set a schedule for daily, monthly. You can change this later on so it's not important to have this nailed down just yet. So I input my IP address and I select OK. This is going to open us up to the edit screen of the new client that we've just registered with our appliance. The important parts to pay attention to for this step is one, the password field. So we'll automatically generate a password for you, or you can set something that's a little more human readable. Additionally, pay attention to the client networking options. You need to make sure that this is something that you'll be able to access so we can make a successful connection. Port 9102 is the default. We hit Apply, and then we hit Activate Configuration. Applying will save your settings. Activate Configuration will actually go out and update any clients that you have set up. So if we were modifying this after the fact, it wouldn't actually change the settings here, whether it's schedule, retention, or other, until you hit Activate Configuration. OK, we've now successfully activated this new client. So currently, there's no target machine connected to this client, so we have to set up that relationship. To do that, we're going to go into our software section. And because it's a Windows 2008 server, we're going to download and install our Windows 32-bit client software. Once installed, we'll be able to open the software and configure the new agent. This machine already has a client set up, so we're going to run the wizard to set up a new one. We'll choose the option to automatically locate the appliance. If you have trouble doing this, or if you already have the address, which you can find in the address field at the top of your management console, then you can manually enter the appliance info. This is going to scan the network that the agent is currently set up under. And here it's identified three different appliances. I select the one I want. Now you're going to enter the password for your appliance. This is configured during your initial appliance configuration step. This is not the password for the client we just set up. Then I find the client that I just configured. So here I have the Win2K8. If it doesn't show up, you can hit refresh. And now the configuration saved. 
So now that that's done, I can go back to my summary tab and see that we have configured a new client successfully. So other ways to set up a client is if you are connected to your Active Directory server. To do this, you'll need your Active Directory server credentials and location. And then you'll be able to browse through the different machines that exist here. And you'll be able to add any number of machines that you see as clients. And it'll automatically push the client software to each one of those machines. So if you have Active Directory, it may save you a few steps if you have a number of machines that you'd like to activate as clients. In the same sense, if you have VMware, then you would come here to VMware tab, add connection, and to do this you'll need the address of your VMware server and then the admin user name and password. And once you hit next, it will show you all of the VMs under your VMware server and that's it for creating a client. Check out our next video to go through how you actually go through and edit clients as far as creating shared file sets and scheduling priority and setting retention policies. For more information, visit infrasale.com or check out our YouTube channel for more self-help videos.